So hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Passions Podcast. Woo! I am Laura. I'm Latara. And, and we, we are here with the incredible Don Swaby. Hey, guys. <laughs> I can't Thank believe you so much it. for having me on your show. Thank you so, so much. I'm very honored, very thrilled to be hanging out with you guys. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's you. so kind. Thank you for sharing your time with us. It's amazing. I'm so, I cannot wait to get into talking more about passions and like what you're doing now and everything. So thank you so much. Um, like we were telling you before we recorded, started recording, you are our first actor from the show that we've gotten in touch with. We haven't even talked to anyone else yet. So we are really excited to do this for the first time but i'm nervous <laughs> oh, don't be yeah i know and hey hey it's all good it's all good you're you're with family you know you, you're in the passions family so we're, we're all family here so we, we just, you know we're gonna have a good time so just relax sit back let's have some fun okay let's, let's do, do it, it then so don can you tell us a little bit about your acting background what got you into theater what got you into acting in film and television Sure, sure. Um, so I uh, fell in love with acting in high school. Um, and, um, you know, by I think uh, the junior year is when I realized I wanted to be a professional actor. So I uh, uh, auditioned for several schools. I, I ended up going to uh, Boston University. Uh, they had a classical theater uh, training program there, conservatory. So uh, um, that's what I did. And I, I went there and um, I uh, had a great, uh, uh, a great training, um, uh, and uh, during that time, I actually started professionally um, doing theater in Boston. Um, so at one point, I was doing plays in Boston uh, professionally, and I was also uh, still in school. Um, and uh, I also had a work study program. So uh, and you know, I was keeping up with my other classes. So I basically didn't sleep for like half of my a college career <laughs> but I, it was uh yeah. it was a lot of fun i mean i i it, it was just a a great beginning for me um and then yeah so that's that's uh that's what it was i caught the acting bug in high school and, and became a, a trained uh classically trained actor and um uh and then after that went back to new york which is where i'm from new york city uh and continued to act as uh, you know was doing uh started doing some tv uh, to did my first uh, film role, um, have a small role in G.I. Jane, you know, which was the film that Demi Moore did back in the day. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, directed by Ridley Scott. So that was great. And um, was also starting to do radio and then uh, uh, off Broadway started to, you know, was doing a lot of regional theater uh, mm -hmm. on the East Coast. Um, and um, yeah, and then in 1999, I got the call saying, hey, you want to audition for this soap opera? And, uh, you know, as they say, I auditioned, got the call back, then did a screen test in L.A. with a bunch of other guys. And then two weeks from then, got the call that I got the role of uh, Chad Harris on this brand new soap opera called Passions and, you know, moved out here to uh, sunny L.A. And the rest is history, you know, as they say. Wow. So. Well, that covers like what the next question was, which was like, what's the process what was your audition process for Passions? So you got a call from, I presume, like your agent and said, do you want to audition for this show? Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I, I will tell you this, you know, um, you know, sometimes things are meant to happen when, you know, the way they the way they happen. So um, I was actually doing um, uh, Raisin in the Sun, um, uh, the play by uh, Lorraine Hansberry mm -hmm. um, at uh, uh, a theater festival in upstate New York. Um, Williamstown and um, it was actually with a great cast too. Viola Davis uh, was in it um, the late Gloria Foster wow. uh, who um, in our generation and we remember her as the first uh, oracle in the first Matrix film she was mm -hmm. the, the woman making baking the cookies she was yeah um, so it was, it was you know Kimberly Elise um, I was you know acting opposite her so it was a great cast and uh, we were actually thinking we were going to be going Broadway with that show um, and I was uh, going uh, back to New York uh, uh, City because we were upstate uh, in, uh, during the weekends to audition for certain, you know, uh, uh, you know, projects and what, whatnot. And um, I kind of got tired of that, you know, after like the third weekend of doing that. So when my uh, manager called uh, and she said, you want to come down 
back to New York City for that. I said, nah, I was like, I'll just, I'm going to pass. I'm just going to pass on it. So uh, I, when I finished the show, when we finished the run of uh, Raisin in the Sun, at the end of the summer, came back to New York City and she, my manager's like, well, they're still looking, you know, they're still looking for, you know, an actor for this role. So now do you want to go in? I was like, okay, yeah, well, now that I'm back, let's, let's do it. Um, and, you know, and then I, like I said, I, I had the uh, first initial audition and then got a call back. Uh, and then the screen test, as I said, you know, they flew me and a bunch of other guys out here, about eight of us. And um, that was a great experience, you know, being on the set. And, and I did my screen test uh, with, um, uh, with Lena Cardwell, um, who was the first Simone, uh, and of course with Brooke Kerr. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it was a great feeling. I had a, I had a good feeling. And, and there were a bunch of other things that kind of happened that weekend. Uh, that kind of let me know that, yeah, something might be happening with this. And, and um, you know, uh, and like I said, two weeks from then, you know, I remember the day I got the call and, you know, my agent was like, you got it, you know, P.S. You got to move to L.A. in two days. Like, wow. I'm not kidding. Wow. I literally packed up my life and moved from the East Coast to, to like, literally he called me on a Wednesday and said, you got the role. Um, and then he said, you got a costume fitting that Friday. So and then you have your first day that Monday. So I was like, oh, okay. Wow, so that's incredible. Yeah, so I basically packed up my whole life and, uh, you know, and moved out there. Um, uh, uh, and, I, I mean, of course, I didn't have a place to stay, so I stayed with a friend. Um, and, um, uh, and then I remember that first weekend. It was actually my birthday weekend. I just turned 26 that Saturday. So I spent that Saturday with, like, a pile of scripts, basically memorizing these these uh, lines. I actually had my, my first day on set, uh, I did my first three episodes back to back. So we're talking like, you know, anywhere from like 50, 40 to 60 pages of dialogue that I wow. had to memorize. Um, and that dialogue is so similar because there's all this recap, right? You've got to get the audience caught up to date on all of the things that has happened. And how difficult is it to try and remember the lines that are very similar, but just different enough. So you have to be so specific when you're preparing, man, that's well, going to be tough. In a, in a way, actually, that was actually, that actually made it easier for me anyway, to, to memorize um, mm -hmm. because of the fact that uh, they were, uh, uh, you know, it was the same situation, you know, just kind of elongated, you know, uh, or prolonged the, this, you know, whatever the storyline was. And so, yes, as you know, a lot of repeats. Um, and so in a way, lent itself to being you know easier for me to anyway to, to sort of remember oh yeah right we're talking about this and we talked about that last week and the week before um uh if anything for me as the actor the challenge was like i was not going to pretend that this is the first time i'm saying something if mm -hmm. if i know that my character has said this to this other character you know uh before then i'm going to say it with the weight of that like okay look We've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. This is, this is, this, you know, whatever. And so for me, the thing was like, okay, well, how, you know, how do I, you know, uh, uh, integrate that into the actual, the, the character in terms of uh, 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 how he would react to be having to say, you know, something uh, uh, over and over again, um, that kind of a thing. And so, yeah, I just kind of, you know, incorporated that. You do, you did do a good job of doing that on the show. Now that I'm thinking about it, because you do, you say the same thing over and over again. Recently it's been, Ethan, man, you sure you're not in love with Teresa? And <laughs> right. It's like, okay, look, brother, I've been asking you like the last how many months, like, are you sure that you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you do, you like, say it differently every time. And it is, I can tell I've already said this to you. Like this is like right. new yeah. information to you, you know? So uh, but I, I hadn't thought about it, but you do do a great job of that. You did do a great job of that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. Like I said, that was, there's some challenges, you know, in, 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 in a sense, that was one of them, um, you know, uh, uh, because again, you, you're doing a show where, you know, you work in every day, you know, uh, 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 for the most part, you know, soap operas, you know, shoot year round, there's no seasons. Um, and usually you're getting a script like one or two days before. Uh, and, you know, and they're pumping out those scripts, you know, they're pumping out those scripts. So, 
um, yeah, a lot of it is expository, uh, meaning that it's it's information we've had before. So it's like, how do you do this? And it's not like again, it, it's not like you're starting from scratch each time. You know, it's like well, no, you, we're 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 playing these characters or we're growing with these characters and these roles, and and they're going through a journey. So you know, everything that that's come before has to be to me, you know, has to be acknowledged and you know moving forward is that's the way I approached it so yeah. yeah so I actually want to ask a question about the dialogue um so for instance there was one episode and you may not remember this <laughs> but there's an episode where you had to quote smash mouth you would quote all-star right right hey now right. you're an all-star like all right. when you got that script how did you feel about that when you saw it and thought like is this legit should how how was that a challenge i feel like i would have had a hard time keeping a straight face <laughs> oh uh no not really i mean not really i mean you know i think that in fact that was a you know hit of, at the time i think it was out you know and it was you know um and i'll be honest with you i wasn't even that familiar with the band i mean i knew the song i don't even think i knew the name of the band you know, and I'm kind of, you know, dating myself age-wise, maybe. I don't know. I was like, at the time, you know, um, you know, because I'm playing a character, you know, uh, several years younger than me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I knew the song, but I didn't know, I think, who it was. And I'm like, oh, the band's called Smash Mouth. Cool. Okay. You know, and I knew the lyric, you know, knew the song. So, um, and no, no, it, it totally fit, I think. You know, I think it was a scene with Whitney at the at the high school. And I think I was, uh, at the time, assisting her dad as, as he, you know, he was he was the coach and I was assisting him or something like that. And, mm -hmm. Or his brand new assistant and, you know, yeah. that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but yeah, no, you know, for me, it's like, hey, if, if it fits, you know, the scene and it works for the scene, and that, that, that's good. Okay. I think that's when that classic training comes in. All of a sudden you're reciting these lyrics, which are so heightened. And you're like, oh, it's just like Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's modern day Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also just like a lot funnier now because it's 20 years later. And so it's like, oh my gosh, that's Shrek. <laughs> like, when it, like when it came out, I was like, wait a minute, what's happening on Passions right now? But it was, I mean, it was fun. Passions is such a fun show. I have a question about, um, you were saying that the scripts, you usually get one or two days in advance of shooting those scenes. So I guess I'm curious how, how much influence you as an actor have when creating the character, you know, was the writing room open to the idea of you changing some things here or there? Did they really want you to stick to what was on the page? Um, I was, I was actually very lucky, um, uh, in being on passions because, um, I mean, I found this out too in, in discussion with some of the directors uh, after the fact. Uh, that being, that fact being that we were actually allowed, at least I know I was, um, uh, in terms of um, tweaking uh, lines in the script. You know, the, the, the character of Chad you know, was supposed to be this sort of, you know, guy who's a little street smart, you know, um, you know, wrong, wrong side of the track, so to speak. But, um, you know, uh, 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 he was supposed to be cool and he's supposed to be kind of hip and, and, and that kind of a thing. Um, and he spoke a certain way um, with certain attitude and and they kind of weren't really, you know, credit to all the, to the writers of Passions for being able to take, you know, something and, you know, and just run with it as far as, okay, we got to have all this expository, but then we still got to, you know, fill in the rest with this, you know, interesting dialogue. We've got to sort of move incrementally the, the, the story along um, while at the same time not really moving it as fast as maybe some of the fans might like, you know, um, apparently Passions is one of the more slower moving storylines, I think, uh, where like we had one day that was supposed to be like, it was like 45 days or something, actual days, but yes. like yes. one day. One of and, our listeners yeah. counted, I think it was 47 days long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, damn, you know. Um, and apparently John C. Riley, the, the the creator of the show, had apparently said, um, I remember Travis had told me, uh, Travis Schultz, who, who played the first Ethan, that he, uh, had John uh, Riley had said, yeah, this is, I, I, I basically extended out as long as I possibly can you know, just before the point where, the, where the, the audience might get sick of me or get sick of the show or be, you know, frustrated. So I'm like, damn, you really, you know, teased it out. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and what was the original question? I think you, you, you'd asked about. No, no, no. I was you. You answered it. I was just asking uh, how, how much you were allowed to tweak lines, or if they expected right. you to yeah. and, and, what was on the and, page. Right. Yeah, and 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 I and yeah, and I was and I was very fortunate to be on a show where, where as I said, they did allow me because the the, the writers didn't really have a handle on how uh, Chad spoke, to be honest. Um, and some of what they were writing wasn't exactly, you know, hip or cool or, or just related to like a street sort of character. And I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to have to just, you know, rough it up a little bit. And so, yeah, so I would, you know, rewrite some of those lines and they would be cool with it, you know, 99% of the time, not all the time, but 99% of the time. Uh, they were like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're good with it. So that that was great, you know, being able to do that. And the best part about that is there's a point where when you get the scripts and you start seeing lines written the way you're speaking, and that wow. shows, wow, the writers are watching the show. They're actually hearing it. Okay. And then all of a sudden I found the things that I was doing, they were incorporating into the scripts, into the future scripts. So that was great when they start writing for you in that sense. That's awesome. Yeah. It makes it a real collaboration, not just, these are my lines. You have to read them exactly how I have written them. So that's awesome that they were willing to take some input and to make the show better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because not every not every show, you know, allows that, you know. Um, uh, and I found that out too, that, you know, some of the directors are like, hey, on some other shows, you know, they really are, you know, they run a tight ship as far as that. And, and you know, you say what's written, um, you know, and, and that's that. So, you know, again, we were, you know, very fortunate to, to, to have that leeway. Mm -hmm. And growing up in New York City, you, you actually have a background that they're looking for, someone from a major metropolitan place, right? So you understand what's current. You have lived that life. So, um, you know, you might not be from the wrong side of the tracks, but you're not from suburbia either, right? Um, yeah, in a way. I mean, you know, the, 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 interestingly enough, I mean, Chad actually is from, uh, uh, you know, from the West Coast, really, and I'm from the East Coast. Um, and having lived out in LA, you know, the last 20, uh, 21 years now, um, you know, they're very different. I mean, you know, the East Coast and the, uh, and the West Coast uh, have very different energies, you know, the people speak differently and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, at the same time, I sort of brought, I think, subconsciously, or not really realizing a sort of it, to me anyway, an East Coast vibe, an East Coast street vibe to the character, you know, and I'm looking like, yeah, okay, because that's what I kind of, you know, uh, and granted, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I went to a, a, a you know, parochial, you know, a private Catholic elementary school, high school, uh, I, you know, I was academically astute and, you know, uh, straight A kid, and so, you know, I was that kind of kid, uh, you know, I mean, I was a little nerdy, hanging a lot, you know what I mean, I was, you know, I mean, I did sports too. I was actually very athletic. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I did a lot of things. I did a lot of things. But um, but at the same time, I think I was able to draw upon, you know, just the things that I've observed, uh, observed uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, uh, other types of people and whatnot. So I kind of just, I think, drew on that to create uh, Chad, the character, because uh, because he was a creation. I mean, you know, he, he doesn't speak the way I speak. You know, it, it was funny. A lot of fans, when they, they would meet me, they'd be like, oh, wow, yeah, you're, you, you, that's not, you're not, you're not Chad, you know, as far as the way you speak or talk. I'm like, no, that's, he, that's a creation. That's, 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 it's a character I'm playing. And I tried to play him realistically, but, um, but it's not me a hundred percent. You know, I try to bring some of me to the role, of course, and you try to do that with every role. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I definitely wanted him to be, I mean, from the get, I mean, and it was a character that I was, that I was, that I'd started creating even through the audition process. I mean, I think that's what helped me get it. You know, the role is that I, you know, came in there with this idea of like, okay, I'm going to really create this character and, and he's going to sound a certain way, act a certain way and have a certain, you know, um, you know, bravado and a certain thing. And I, I, you know, and then I just developed that and honed that throughout the years I played him, so. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are the similarities between Don and Chad then? Like, what were the things that you brought that you said, I'm going to bring this of myself into this character? Um, 
definitely the passion, you know, pa you know, no pun intended. Right. But uh, <laughs> definitely, you know, <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of passion um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the love uh, for his, his craft. I mean, uh, Chad was a, you know, music producer. He loved music. Um, I myself uh, also love music. I mean, I love the arts in general and I'm, I'm an actor, I'm a writer. I am a musician. I play guitar. Um, so uh, I've been playing since I was a kid. So, you know, uh, uh, definitely that passion for art, uh, for creating uh, is something that, you know, I definitely, um, you know, clicked with uh, uh, and I brought to um, uh, the role um, that Chad and I have in common. Um, and I would also say uh, his determination, my determination, I'm a very determined person, very ambitious person. I've always kind of been, and, uh, you know, definitely Chad, you know, was too uh, uh, very ambitious and, and very determined, you know, very determined young man type of thing. So I, uh, uh, you know, definitely share that with him as well. Yeah. It's clear that you really love Chad Harris. Like you put so much work and so much time and so much love into that character and the way you speak about him is just beautiful. Um, I'm curious to know if you could play anyone else on Passions, gender bend, whatever, who, who, what character would that be? Who would you love a stab at? Oh, that's a, that's an interesting question. I've never been asked that before. Um, hmm. Honestly, I, I would say it's just because it was seeing this actor play, you know, th this character, you know, he had so much fun in it and he was phenomenal. And I'm talking about uh, the amazing Ben Masters playing <laughs> Julia Crane. I mean, yeah. you know, um, Ben was phenomenal and, and in that role. Um, and he just made that role seem like so much fun, it really did. You know, so if I could play one character for a day, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd play Julian. Just, just for a day. Yeah. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like villains are always fun to, oh, to, yeah. to, to, to kind oh, yeah, of play. Yeah. I mean, you know? it's funny because I was, I was going to think, I was going to say initially, uh, Kay, I was actually going to say, you know, her character, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, what would it be like to, to, to play her character too? Um, because again, like you said, you know, something about you know, playing, you know, uh, villains and, uh, and, and, and what's, what's great about great villains is, is, uh, whether it be, you know, TV, film, books, whatever, is that you like them. There's something about them that is likable, um, or at least it should be to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think with Ben, he certainly gave Julian a certain charm mm -hmm. that despite his actions, what he was doing, he was, you know, he was still a charming kind of human being or a person. And, and, and so, you know, it's like, yeah, there's a part a part of them that you like, but at the same time, like, yeah, but you know, what he's doing is, is, is horrible and you, you just, you know, but at the same time, you, you, you like, there's some of, something about them that you do like. Yeah. And um, yeah. that's he's appealing. A sleaze... you know. oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say, he's a sleaze ball, but I'm laughing at him the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we talk about, we actually talk about that a lot. Talk about Julian specifically, where I'm like, I hate what he is doing, but I want to watch more of it. <laughs> Because it's so, right, Ben right. does a, an amazing, an amazing job. Masterful. He is fantastic. So at making you like that character somehow, mm -hmm. even though Julian is horrible. <laughs> no. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I think Julian would be a fun, a fun one to play as well. Yeah. 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 Um, actually, uh, I want to go back because you, I, I heard you talk about you're a great lover of the arts. And Laura and I are also big, big fans of the, not just fans of the arts. We work in the arts. Um, we're both musicians. We both went. We, oh, excellent. Oh, really? We, okay. we, we what, met each what, other. We met each other. Um, On tour. <laughs> yeah. At, in an opera, working for an opera company. So mm -hmm. um, oh. we both are musicians. We went to the same grad school, but not at the same time for, for voice. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm, I'm, ha we happen to still be like music teachers. <laughs> so, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a fake teacher, but you're not a fake a teacher. <laughs> that's nonsense. You no, know, if, you, if you're teaching, are you, are you teaching kids? Or, or as, I'm, somebody, I'm music, are you, I'm music direct student? shows. So I'm not like in the classroom like that. I'm music director. You're directing. So yeah. and directing is, is in a yeah. sense of form of teaching too. You're directing. You're actually, yeah. so yeah, no, give yourself that credit. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's it's amazing. A, so you're both a uh, uh, vocal performance. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Excellent. And opera too. 
Yeah. So, so when weird. you were when you were talking about your classic training, you can really say, I was like, oh, I know conservatory life. Say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Laura was saying like when you were saying, oh, I didn't when I was in college, I was working, and I couldn't. There was no sleep. We we're like, yeah, there's no sleep, no sleep when you go to school for music or the, generally like the arts. Like there's so much to learn, so much to do, and then yeah, you will get jobs. So we can relate. 100 percent we can really picking up and moving your whole life in the span of two days and all of a sudden it's like yeah you've got a costume fitting you're in rehearsal oh someone got sick will you step in and fill in for them and it's just like you have no time to to do anything and it's it's you know you go to I feel like coming out of high school you go to college and you're like oh I love this it's going to be so much fun uh and then you get there and you're like I've never worked harder in my whole damn life (laughs) (laughs) right right it's fun the whole the whole thing is so rewarding and you love every minute of it, but you really are pouring your entire life and mind and body and soul into, into that. Yeah. When I say blood, sweat, and tears, I mean it literally. <laughs> yes. yes. And loving every minute of it too. You know, that's the thing. It's like, it, it's it, because we're so passionate about it. You know, it almost it doesn't seem like, I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's so much work, but when you, when you, when you're really loving it and you just, uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem tedious. It doesn't seem like laborsome. It just seems like, okay, it's, 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 if anything, it's, it's that high intensity feeling of, of, of feeling like your entire being self is being, you know, uh, uh, used, is being utilized and, and you're just, you know, uh, 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 and it's a trial by fire and you're just jumping in, um, you know, uh, so yeah, that, that feeling has got to be awesome. Totally. So, so wh- where did you go? To, where did you guys go? You went to the same school? Um, we did undergrad separately. So I did my undergrad. I'm from Tennessee. So I did my undergrad at Tennessee Tech University. And then we both went to grad school at um, Bowling Green State University in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. And I and then- went to conservatory at Peabody Conservatory in Baltimore and then ended up back in Ohio. And now we're here in Brooklyn. So bouncing around a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So yeah. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, no, I, I have a huge, um, uh, 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 admiration for, I mean, not just, you know, for, for, for singers and when I say real singers, I mean, I even remember, uh, meeting some of the people, uh, who were in the, uh, the voice, uh, program, uh, when I was an undergrad at BU, um, uh, who, uh, actually was friends with several of those people. Um, in fact, one of my best friends uh, from the Boston University acting program uh, was primarily a singer. I mean, he was a great actor, too, but he did most of his work, um, actually, uh, uh, musical theater. I mean, he did 99 percent, you know, musical theater, for example. Um, and then my very first job uh, when I graduated uh, and went back to New York uh, was uh, as a supernumerary at the, uh, the, the New York State Opera uh, House uh, uh, in, uh, at the, near the Kennedy Center, mm-hmm. Center in uh, that area there. Um, and um, it was uh, a German uh, uh, opera named Matthias de Mahler, uh, or Matthew the Painter. I don't know if I, if, if I translated it correctly or not, but it's, anyway, in, Mer- in, in English, it's uh, uh, Matthew the Painter. But, um, uh, and I was uh, uh, basically hired uh, to be one of the actors to do uh, fight scenes. They actually had like three, mm-hmm. no, three or four different scenes that they needed people who had fight training. And I love doing that kind of stuff. I love, mm-hmm. you know, being physical and, and, and choreography and, and fights and all of that. Um, and so I auditioned and, you know, got hired. And just listening, you know, uh, on all those nights to those, uh, uh, the singers, I was like, wow damn these people can sing you know just just so like yeah like this the, the amount of power that they that they have command to uh, uh and some of them it just seemingly seemingly effortless i mean i know that they're you know they're, they're working and they're doing their thing but just you know just this voice pouring out of them um yeah i really gained a, a huge appreciation for opera doing that that's awesome. Yeah, so my hat's off to you guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I mean, being on stage with opera singers is a, an experience for sure. So I'm yeah. glad you got to experience it. <laughs> I feel oh, yeah. like that yeah. rush of creating is always so interesting. And I imagine it's got to be the same thing when you're filming 
even though you're filming, you know, it's not, it's not a live presentation like you are when you're on the stage, you've still, you're, you're sharing, you're going back and forth. You feel that thing that you're creating together. It's just in a slightly different medium, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Whether it's, you know, whether it's, um, to me, the cre it's the creative process, right? It's mm -hmm. it, regardless of, of the medium, regardless of, of the, uh, the genre of it or whatever it's it's you're creating um you know uh whether you're doing a, a, a theatrical you know a play whether you're doing you know a musical whether you're doing an opera whether you're doing a film or a tv show you know um, or a radio play you know you're uh, uh 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 there's that element of the unknown the element of of you know we're doing this live and we're creating something and something new could come in and happen and it, you know and 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 to elevate the whole thing and and, and uh, um, you know, uh, uh, if situations happen, um, you know, again, live theater, live performance, as we all know, things can go wrong and you still gotta just keep going. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you know, you just, you keep moving it along and you just, you know, uh, uh, you know that's when people get really, um, you know, that's spontaneous, you know, sort of genius that, that turns on and you just, you know, you figure something out on the fly and you just, you know, and you run with it um and uh yeah and that's like you said it's it's visceral you feel it you know it's just that that, that excitement inside because you know yeah live 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 performances are, are are amazing um and even the preparation for them i mean just the the, the rehearsal process that the creating uh, uh coming together with other creative people um and and just you know uh, uh, seeing how it organically you know at least ideally right you want it to be something that organically takes takes shape and and um, and again, when, you know, I'm not saying that you know everything's perfect. I'm sure we can all have, you know, some of our you know horror stories about you know some you know drama or things that happen in in the professional world. Um, you know, I'm sure we have all got those stories. I've got those stories where I'm like, this is professional. Yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of, you know what I mean? You know, the way some people are acting, or the way some people are, you know, you got some drama going on, or you know, things like that, you know, things happen, things happen. Yeah. Um, and you can deal with that too, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, yeah, I totally feel you on that. Just, yeah, that, that feeling it's, yeah. it's, it's great. You mentioned the rehearsal process just a few minutes ago, and I'm curious to bring it back to passions briefly. When you're on a soap, you're recording five days a week you're recording every day during the year you know you don't sometimes really have weekends. seasons sometimes weekends we wow. gave up wow. many quite a few saturdays too in yeah. fact i actually so i was supposed to see metallica for the first time uh, uh many all those years ago and i had to give up my ticket and because i was like you know, like oh we're shooting like no so <laughs> and I, I saw them again you know i saw them eventually but yeah i'm sorry Such but a go ahead. bummer though you don't want to miss metallica i know um, but I was going to ask, you know, if the scripts are rolling out every couple of days, how, how is that rehearsal process? Because you probably don't have the time to build it organically, you know? No, the, the rehearsal process is pretty short, you know, in soaps, because as you, as you said correctly, uh, you know, they're shooting every day. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fast. It's, you're moving fast. Um, and, uh, you know, I found out again, the hard way, you know, my first day on set that, you know, for, you know, if it's good enough for them, you know, even if I'm like, well, I could try it one more time and maybe tweak this a little bit. No, nope, we're moving on. And I remember that first moment when that happened, I was like, oh, oh, okay. You know, like, I, I guess, you know, and I realized, okay, yeah, you know, you'll get a few shots at a scene and if you, you know, if you can get it you know, um, you know, uh, decently well, you know, they're gonna move on because, hey, they've got a whole, you know, in that case, my first day, I get three three episodes to shoot. Um, you know, sometimes we do two episodes or three in, in a day, you know, I mean, usually just one, but sometimes it would be that much, um, you know, or you'd have, you know, those, those uh, what are the 17, 20 hour days, well, not 20, but 17 hours the most, uh, where, you know, usually those big cast events, you know, we're on the set like every day for like 17 hours for two weeks straight. Um, and so it's, it's a lot. Um, but as far as, yeah, like you said correctly, um, with the rehearsal, there really isn't much. I mean, usually um, what happens is uh, uh, you get there in the morning, uh, for example, let's say like seven o'clock, 7.30 or six. If you, you know, if you have hair and makeup for a lot, a lot of the women, they have to come in a lot earlier, like 6 a.m., something like that. 
Um, and, uh, and then, you know, 7.30, 8-ish, you know, we'd go down and you'd rehearse your scenes. You kind of just block them, really. It was just blocking, blocking rehearsal. Um, and then, uh, then you would come back. Uh, usually you'd shoot your, your scenes in a block. So let's say like, you know, after finish, you'd finished rehearsing by like eight or blocking by eight, 8.30. And then, you know, I might not come back to like 2, 2 p.m. And then maybe I'm working from like 2 p.m. to 5 Mm-hmm. you know, um, or one to four or whatever like, uh, like that. And, you, uh, uh, and your scenes would be done in a block, but you'd, you'd get the rehearse maybe, you know, several times, a couple of times, you know, and then boom, and they'd shoot. So you basically had to have, you know, uh, your stuff all together. You had to do, do your own work and come in very prepared. You know, at least for me, that was my approach. You know, I was going to come in with, you know, definitely, of course, all my lines down. Um, and, and, you know, I've already made my choices in the, in the scenes. It's not like, you know, a, a play rehearsal where you got three, four weeks and you're, you're, you know, exploring and you're, no, this is like, okay, I'm on coming to set and I've already done my work from the night before. And I know what I'm doing in, in these scenes. I know, you know, what Chad, you know, uh, uh, what Chad's trying to do, where he's at emotionally, you know, I've already made those decisions so that I, when I can come in, I can just do it. You know, and then of course, you know, you still, you still, you're still open to some of the directors, you know, giving a direction, of course, you know, I mean, they're going to adjust things or say, okay, we'll try it this way or try it, you know, this line with this approach or, or let's, let's go with this energy or maybe makes, makes this decision. And, and, you know, there's a part of me as the actor, you know, you got to be open, you got to be flexible, you got to be, you know, you can't be rigid and like, well, I came in with this and I'm going to do this. It's like, well, no, you got to be, you know, uh, flexible enough to, to adjust and, and to change. So. So how much of Chad's storyline did you know in advance? Like, did you have, did they give you? Oh, no, no, no. We never got a, no, we never got a, a you know, uh, an overview. Like, oh, this is what you're going to be doing for, you know, the next six months. or this is where the storyline is going to go. No, nothing like that. Um, so if anything, it's literally like, for example, that when Chad and, and, and Whitney, you know, make love for the first time, that was me discovering it the night before, <laughs> you, oh, wow. know, in a wow. sprint, you know, oh, okay, this is what we're doing tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. Oh my gosh. So, so oh, yeah. I know the Chad and Whitney storyline was like a huge thing because there was, it was like this daytime, like incest storyline. Right? right. So right. when you realized what it was, how, how did you feel about that? This, this storyline? Um, you know, uh, the very first play that um, I, because uh, I, when I came out here into to LA, um, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an actor, I'm also a musician, uh, I'm a writer. Um, and so I, you know, just sort of jumped into the LA scene artistically as well as doing the show. Um, within a month, I was in a band playing music, original music, writing songs. And I also formed my, my, my a theater company. And the first play that I actually did was a play um, called Fool for Love. In fact, uh, Lindsay uh, uh, Hartley, uh, formerly Lindsay Corman, but Lindsay Hartley, um, who plays Teresa, um, was cast in it, uh, uh, as well as Travis, Travis Schultz, the first Ethan. So they were uh, 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 part of my, uh, 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 the play and I directed it. And the play is actually about a relationship between a brother and sister. Uh, an incestuous kind of well a half brother half sister so half brother half sister they share the same dad um but you know you find it through the course of the play that you know wow yeah that they're they share you know a a parent and they've got this sort of crazy love hate relationship going on um it's a great play um uh written by sam shepherd and so you know so yeah so so long way of saying that you know that in and of itself was not something that you know I you know was turned off by or was like oh that's oh, what is that you know right. no. I mean to me it's like you know you can justify anything in terms of just you know in terms of the story you know if the story you know that's what that's what's the important thing to me it's not so much the Oh, okay. Well, they they happen to be related. It's okay. Well, well, ha- but how is it playing out? I mean, is it is it engaging? Is it is it uh, are we creating a story uh, about these two people that people are are, are still gonna you know uh, be engaged by it and 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 you know whether they love them or hate them or whatever um, you know that's the thing. So it's not so much the uh, you know. So yes, yeah, so I wasn't too you know bothered by that okay. in and of itself. All right. 
that's a great answer. I, yeah. You know, that was. Well, but just so you know, too, we didn't play that just just so you know, initially, I mean, you know, uh, when I was on the show anyway, you know, that was never, you know, we never because we didn't know we didn't know. I mean, that right. was just a rumor kind of a thing, you know, uh, uh, and so it wasn't like anything that we were thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to try to play that. Well, you know, that was never that wasn't part of the storyline really yet uh, on a conscious level for the characters. They weren't aware of it. Um, and so. Um, if anything, I think Chad was supposedly rumored to be, you know, Eve's son and all of that, you know, even Julian. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, but even that, even that wasn't really, you know, we didn't play that. We just were playing the scenes, you know, so when Chad and, and you know, you know, got together and started being intimate, you know, we just played it, you know. Yeah. And that's ha- what heightens the drama, right? The fact that we think something's going on, the characters think another thing is going on, you know. Right. conflict is exciting no one wants to watch a happy family eat dinner on tv like that's <laughs> right. not interesting to watch <laughs> right right <laughs> exactly no you want to and i think that's what you just said is, is another thing that actually helps you know um uh, uh, fans kind of feel like they're they're really you know when they almost you know it's same thing like when you're watching a movie or you're reading a book and, and you send something before the character does it's like no don't go in there you know it's, it's, it's like oh be careful that you know the, it's like you want to yell to the to the screen or the camera or i mean to the to the, the screen or whatever you know uh, uh 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 something that the character doesn't know because you know um and in, in a way it just to me it 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 it, it uh uh makes makes you uh, more even more invested i think uh when as a, as a fan because you're, you're like you know something and you're hoping that the characters figure out figure it out and you you're waiting to see when they do you know kind of a thing mm-hmm. so yeah so is, is there anything that you are working on now that you'd like to share with us or like any projects you're working on uh yeah sure sure um so right now in the last uh uh year or so uh been uh, working on two uh projects one uh i did a proof of concept uh short last year um actually starring uh christy ferris uh who's the second simone um, and a, a long time great friend of mine a wonderful actress and a beautiful human being um and she agreed to be in it um uh uh, Marla Gibbs, uh, who um, I grew up watching on uh, the 70s show, The Jeffersons and and all of that, and 227, and she uh, was also in it, and she was on Passions as well, not the same time I was, but she was also, uh, she was uh, uh, in my short, uh, the Proof of Concept short, uh, which is called Orpheus Star, uh, which is based on my feature script, which I'm trying to get made, um, uh, working with an executive producer now, um, uh, and uh, we are... Uh, you know, we were uh, uh, working on getting it produced. Um, and um, uh, yeah, we, we shot that last year, the, the, the short, um, and uh, basically yeah, trying to get the feature uh, produced uh, this year. And um, uh, another project, uh, so I've got two projects that I've basically been focusing on. There. That's, uh, that's uh, the first project is Orpheus Star. Uh, the second one is a, uh, a sci-fi TV series uh, that I'm very excited about. Um, and it's something that sort of came about, um, initially, uh, there was a short film that I did that I made, I wrote and and, and acted in and, uh, produced, uh, called the, uh, called actually, yeah, it's called the date, um, the actual short, which you can see on my YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, uh, basically, uh, it's, uh, uh, about two archaeologists who are debating a uh, uh, the dating of an archae uh, of an artifact, uh, where one believes that it's a lot older than you know previously you know thought, and that it sort of challenges the entire you know current paradigm that civilization started only six thousand years ago, and this thing is like you know beyond ten thousand years, and that kind of a thing. And in real life, that actually happens. You know, people don't know, but I mean, I have a huge passion for um, uh, ancient civilizations, archaeology. I mean, I was a huge, like, you know, like Indiana Jones is like my favorite movie, you know, character when I was a kid. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I mean, you know, um, so that totally got me into, um, you know, uh, archaeology and ancient civilizations and all of that. So I've been studying those things for years. And, you know, there's so much evidence to prove that, you know, these ancient civilizations were very highly technically technically advanced mm-hmm. um you know and uh uh yeah and 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 so you know what we what we're experiencing now is not the first 
you know, a uh, uh, time that human humanity has had, you know, technology, for example, you know, things like that. Um, but as archaeologists in, in the real world, um, you know, there have been many archaeologists, for example, that have lost their careers that have been blacklisted because they refuse to back down from uh, research that proves, oh, hey, you know, this, uh, 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 what I found or discovered, you know, it doesn't fit the paradigm right now. Um, and it's like, well, you got to change that. It's like, well, no, you know, we can't do that. Um, and so, you know, that's a real fight that's been going on um, in the archaeology world. Um, and so that's, that was the inspiration for what then became um, a, a, a pilot. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I threw in some time travel in there, um, ancient India, um, you know, some ancient, uh, uh, some Hindu gods and goddesses, and a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So it's, 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 um, uh, uh, it's something I'm very excited about. What was that? Amazing. That sounds amazing. That is everything up my alley. I love sci-fi. And it's a love story. I and love it's adventure. A love story. I love I love this. I am absolutely <laughs> on board and I will be keeping my eye on this project. Yeah, for awesome. sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very, very excited about it. Um, I actually uh, working with a production company, uh, uh, signed a development deal with them last fall. Uh, and then uh, they uh, optioned the, the pilot uh in February, uh, we're also shopping it to uh, find other producers to come on board. Um, and so, you know, we're still developing it, creating, you know, world building the show and all of that. Um, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's, so I, I, I can't wait to see the show either. I'm, I'm right there with you. Trust me. I can't wait. Congratulations. To see it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That's fantastic news. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we're going to wrap up here. Um, Don, is there anything you want to say to the people how can they get in touch with you or follow you or anything you want them to to follow you on um, social i mean if they want I, I am there so uh you know just you can just find me on you know with my name don swaby uh uh and uh on uh, uh you know facebook uh I, I don't really use twitter that much so facebook and instagram um and i think it's like like on instagram it's don underscore swaby uh facebook you just put in the name um, also got my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel has got, uh, uh, and also Vimeo, uh, but I've got, you know, a lot of my short films that I've made in the last several years and uh, other things, uh, some uh, music videos that, that I kind of put together with some of my original music as well. Um, so you can check me out there. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, that's, and, and, and feel free to say hi. I'm, I'm very approachable you know, uh, uh, through social media as fans know and people know. So, you know, uh, don't be, don't be, don't be shy, you know, just uh, reach on out and say what's up and trust me, you'll, you'll hear back from me. I, well, I always respond. And, and, uh, this has been amazing. You are amazing. Thank you so, 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 so much. I can't thank you enough for this. I cannot. Yeah, I've been smiling can't. the entire time. Like, I can't. <laughs> we can't overstate how grateful we are for you sharing your time with us and your wisdom and your life story. So thank you very much for being here with us today. You guys are very, very welcome. I was very honored, very honored to be asked to be on your show. And um, yeah, I had, a, I had a great time too. Uh, it was great to reminisce um, about, you know, a show that, you know, is will always be a part of my life, will always be you know, um, uh, uh, you know, the passions families, you know, the show may, it may not be, you know, going on uh, anymore, but we're all still here. And what's great is that we can, you know, sort of celebrate it still and remember it. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so just, you know, anytime I get a chance to, 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 to talk about it and, and, and you know, and to share that is, 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 is great. So yeah, had a great time too. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Don. Have a great day. <laughs> you, too. you too. Bye, guys. Right. Bye. Bye.